Bibles to Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew chapter number 6, we're continuing on the Sermon on the Mount. And we're starting Matthew chapter number 6 tonight. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4. Matthew chapter number 6, 1 through 4 is where we're at tonight. And it's an interesting uh, portion. It's pretty actually straightforward, but we will look at it and we will understand what the Lord Jesus wants to teach us. In Matthew chapter number 6, we're going to be looking at verse number 1 through 4. It says, verse number 1, take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost, doest get thine, let me try that again. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be have glory of men verily i say unto you they have their reward but when thou doest alms let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thine alms may be in secret and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly let's ask the lord's blessing on our time together Dearly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to study your word again. And Father, we thank you so much for just being here and to know you better, the opportunity to, to understand what you said. And Father, we ask you to bless this time together. I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The question that I am going to ask, and... It's okay if you don't answer, because it could be many different things that we might answer. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask the question, just have you think about it, okay? So don't answer out loud, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, what should a good Christian do on a regular basis? What should a good Christian do on a regular basis? There's many different things that we can, we can point to. Like, for instance, it would be a great thing for every single Christian to read their Bible every day. Oh, it's an amazing thing that we have the opportunity. Okay, we have God's Word at our fingertips. In fact, we have so many ways of, of reading God's Word. We could read it in our Bibles that are out. I love having a Bible that I could actually flip through pages, and I don't know, just the feel of that is just absolutely great. Other people, they have their Bibles on their phones. Yeah, absolutely, and there's nothing wrong with that. I actually found when I couldn't sleep one night, I found a Bible app that I absolutely love because it not only does it give you the King James, but also when you hit a couple buttons here and there, it gives you the actual, the um original wording in the original language. And so if it's Greek, it has the Greek words. It's like, okay, this means these, the, these different definitions, plus here's where it also is located throughout the Bible. I'm like, hey, this is great. And so I just really like that. So if I don't have uh, the Bible with me and I'm at a place, like for instance, I'll be at the, uh, the tax collector's uh, <laughs> office tomorrow trying to get a, uh, a so, so we were given a car just recently, like within a few uh, weeks, and we're like, oh, okay, well, that, that's cool, um, and so we're, we're putting it into our name, but there's been a little bit snafu since the last time I tried this, so we're going to try it tomorrow, and so when I don't have my Bible near, I have my phone, I get it out, and all of a sudden, oh, we have now the Bible, okay, here's the Greek word, here's the Hebrew word, word and okay this is found other places it's absolutely fantastic other people have that of an audio bible like you you hit play and then somebody's reading the bible to you and a lot of people they they do well with that because they they make the claim well i don't like reading 
Well, yeah, okay. I know some people that really don't like reading, struggling to read. Uh, I was probably one of them when I was younger because of my dyslexia. And so I'm reading, reading, reading. All of a sudden, I have no idea what I'm reading. In fact, I'm going in a major circle on the page. It's kind of like, okay, I've read this word many times. I have no idea what I'm reading right now, but I learned how to deal with that. But yet, some people said, well, I don't like reading. Well, you can hit play. Have somebody else read it to you. Yeah, just an amazing thing that we have the Bible so many different ways that we ought to. We should spend some time in God's Word. It doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to be four hours a day, okay? It doesn't have to be even one hour a day. It's just whatever time you can spend in God's Word is so beneficial for each Christian to do on a regular basis. How about this? How about that of praying? Every Christian should pray on a regular basis. Now, it's a little bit different than, you know, praying for your food. That's good. That's fine. You know, I, I know people that do either or, but okay, Pray for your food. Yeah, that's good. But let's pray for our missionaries. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray for the church itself. Let's pray for your families. Let's pray for your, your friends, your neighbors. Your, you got so many different opportunities to pray. And praying over an abundance to, for them is a wonderful ministry that each one of us should have. And you don't have to pray that long either. It doesn't have to be four hours a day. John Wesley, he did four hours a day. But I don't think you, <laughs> you, sh you need to do that much to be a good Christian. How about this? Going to church. I appreciate each and every one of you here tonight. Uh, Wednesday night is always an interesting night. Because I've heard it said that the um, Sunday morning is the popularity of the preacher. Then Sunday evening is the popularity of the church. But for those who come out for Wednesday, it's the popularity of the Savior. And so I appreciate each and every one of you being here tonight. It's always a good time that we can pray one for another. So going to church is a great thing to do on a regular basis. I, sometimes you're not able to, understand that. Um, but that's a good thing that Christians should do. How about this? How about worshiping God? We can worship God every single day. You know, you can put on different hymns or different uh, songs that, that really, uh, it, it's just showing who God is and how great he is to you. And so that's just worship there. How about this? How about to minister in whatever way God wants you to minister? Now that could be for children in the children's ministry. That could be uh, giving uh, to different uh, ministries or, or what have you. It just in whatever way God wants you to minister, that you should do on a regular basis. But here's the thing that we're going to be talking about, which is kind of taboo to speak about, at least in our church, is that of giving. <laughs> you give. Yes, that's what a Christian should do on a regular basis. Now, we'll, we'll talk about this uh, a little bit later and talking about the text that we're looking at, giving of alms. Uh, but one thing that I want to point out here that is really in this text in verses 1 through Let's see, I want to say verse 18 is simply, it's not about the what you do. It's all about the motivation, the, the motives that you have behind it. Christ is saying, okay, this is what you should do, but yet not in this way or in that way. But rather, you should have this because your motivation should be something else than what normal people have. And so we're going to be talking about motivation. Motivation is just as important as what we do. Why we do something is as important as what we do. So think about this. Different examples in the Bible where people had motivations, whether good or bad. For instance, Balaam. Balaam was a prophet. He was a prophet for hire. So he did whatever he could do in order to get the money. So he was approached by the king of Moab. King of Moab said, hey, I, there's this nation that just came out of captivity. They're in around my land. I want you to curse them. I'll give you money to curse them. Then we have an interesting time where he is on his donkey going towards the place where the king of Moab is going to meet him. And the donkey, what? 
He talks. Okay, how many times do, do your pets talk to you? <laughs> like, like, there's different ways a dog can talk. You know, he wags his tail, he's happy. You know, he has a big smile on his face if he's wagging his tail. Or how about this? You might have a parrot that actually can talk. And you teach him different, uh, different ways of, uh, of talking. And so, um, but yet, you think about it, that is an interesting story. Balaam goes, meets the king of Moab, and he tries to curse Israel but he can't because God puts blessings in his mouth rather than cursings. Now, instead of I curse you and may nothing, hap- may nothing good happen to you and various things like that, it's I bless you in the name of the Lord and you shall be well and you shall conquer the land and all these different things. He, he can't stop blessing them. Then king of Moab said, okay, well, let's go to over here. Over here, okay, now curse him goes over here, and once again, blessings come out of his mouth. He can't stop blessing the nation of Israel. Okay, okay, maybe over here, maybe over here. We're just just trying to find the right place that you could actually do this. Okay, curse the nation of Israel. And once again, blessings come out of his mouth. But then he says, I'll I'll tell you what to do if you give me the money. You go and you infiltrate the the nation of Israel, and you have the women seduce the men. And then they will be forsaken of their God, and they won't have anything to deal with you. And so, that's what, exactly what happens. Then we have Phineas, the amazing son of Eleazar, with a spear in his hand to, uh, well, correct that which is not good in the nation of Israel, and God commends him for it. The motives of a person, it, it shows from what they do. Think about it, Ananias and Sapphira, they sold their, their property and gave to the church, but yet withheld that back, I don't know, for their own selfish. They wanted to have the commendation of the church, the pat on the back saying, good job, but not the sacrifice of actually giving everything to God. They have their most, and, and God struck them dead because of it. So that's an example of how not to give, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> but, but think about it. Different people have different motives. Some people actually have pure motives, and God blesses him for, for that. Uh, you think of that of David. David is an amazing person in that he, was, he got the, the, the city of Jerusalem to be his capital, and he made his, his palace all ready and he had the, the Ark of the Covenant come into Jerusalem. But then he kept on looking at all that he had, looked at the tents that the Ark of the Covenant was in. And he said, well, God's so great, and I am not, so I want to build a temple for God. And Nathan, of course, says, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Go do it. The Lord's with you. Hold on, Nathan. <laughs> he came to him and dream. Hold on, Nathan. I am not with you on this. David is great because he, he wants to do something that God himself did not instruct him to do. He did not command him at any point in time saying, I need a temple. No, it's he wants to give that temple. He has that motivation of, yes, God is so great. He needs to be shown as great, and so I'm going to build a temple. Well, God blesses him for it, but he tells him, you have blood on your hands. You're a man of war. Your son after you will build the temple. So many people, motivations, but yet the blessing with those motivations. I love the story of King Josiah. King Josiah, amazing person that becomes king at a very, very young age. King Josiah gets a copy of the law. He has the law read to him. And then all of a sudden he realizes that Judah, the nation that he's the king of, has sinned greatly against God. And so he says, well, we need to get right with God. And so he repents himself and he weeps and he prays and he prays and he prays. And then word came back to him saying, God, hears your prayer. And well, Judah is doomed to have this judgment on them. That is true. But because of what you did, they will hold off the punishment until after you're gone. And so during his time, he didn't have to worry about Babylon coming in and Nebuchadnezzar was holed off until after Josiah died. He had 
the pure motives, and God blesses him for that. So tonight we're going to see motivations behind that of giving. Now, first, when we think of giving, notice with me in verse number one, it says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. The word alms is a very interesting word. It has the understanding in it that it's whatever you do to give to those who are less fortunate, to those who are poor. So you think about different uh, people on that you might encounter in your life, and they are not well-to-do, they need help, and you decide, I'm going to give. Now, true enough, I would say wisdom in, in doing that, you know, the people with the cardboard box, the cor- cor- cardboard sign says, you know, help wanted or needed or whatever, uh, it could be the, a legitimate thing. It could also be one of those cases that they all soon get into their Mercedes and go to their mansion. Just don't know. And so some people, they come to church and they ask for help. And so I always hear their story, and, uh, and most of the time I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and give you some gas. I'll give you some um, you know, gift cards to a uh, grocery store to get some groceries, help you out in that way. Um, very rarely do we do anything more than that of like giving uh, hotel, uh, you know, stays at hotels for people, um, just because we know that a hotel stay could be very pricey. If the person doesn't leave, like when they said, they're, oh, I'm only going to spend two nights there. Oh, okay, well, we'll just spend it on two nights. No, no, no. They can stay up till 30 days. That's a long time to pay for, and that's exactly what you are liable for if you have somebody that you put up in a hotel, 30 days of that hotel stay. So you think about it, giving your alms before men, that of giving to a, pov- a person in poverty or a person that is poor, uh, there is this case in the temple where there is a certain section that whatever you give in this section, it was given to the poor. And so you see people come in and they would then put it into this section more and more and more um, to, in order to help the, po- the people that are poor in the nation of Judah, in the city of Jerusalem especially. And so that is really what is seen. But you think of that of giving, and there's many different ways that we could give, uh, specifically to the church and various things. That's the one, one thing that uh, is hard to talk about because Satan can use it saying, you know, this church only wants your money. Oh, this is all, all that ministry is all about is, oh, they're trying to get your money. Which, true enough, a lot of ministries that are like, okay, give us your money and God will bless you or, or whatever it might be. I've seen a few different evangelists like that on the TV or whatever, but yet that is a, pos- a, a problem for uh, many different um, people saying, oh, they only just want you for your money. There's this one pastor that, to, that I read um, yesterday about he was paid $340,000 for his one year of service. I thought, okay, you must be a really, really good pastor. Well, evidently not because he then embezzled some of it too, uh, and now he's facing jail time. So yeah, but yeah, that of giving is always a wonderful thing to do, and we ought to do it as Christians, giving to, to uh, the Lord's work in whatever way we can. Some people would say, well, the tithe, 10% of your income, which is a good starting place to say, okay, you know, giving that of your own resources to the church. Giving that of offerings is a great thing, anything above your 10%. So, but in all reality, thinking about the tithe, there is no mention of tithe outside of the Old Testament and the Gospels. I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. It's more of, in 1 Corinthians, it's talking about, okay, give joyfully unto the Lord. Is there a percentage? Well, I like to go with a tithe because that's pretty simple. You know, it actually predates the law and, and you know, Abraham giving to Melchizedek a tithe, a 10% of all of his income. So I see that that's a good, good starting place from, but yeah, it's very interesting that of giving in all reality, God wants more than just our money. God wants us 
in our entirety. We are to be living sacrifices, holy and, and acceptable before the Lord, which is our reasonable service. So think about it. Giving, okay, we should give. Yes. But now, number two, why give? Why should we give? Well, number one, it supports the local church in doing what uh, the Lord wants it to do. So people, if people don't give, guess what happens to me? I go and get a job <laughs> again. <laughs> so, you know, if, if, if the giving dries up, then we just have to make do of, okay, how much will it cost in order to, well, turn the lights on? How much would it cost if, you know, to get the AC on? That's pretty important stuff. Um, and then, you know, worry about, about finances with me and otherwise later. But it supports the local church. And last year it was a major praise that we, we did that God blessed us over in abundance about what we got versus what we were expected. Okay, we thought 88000 while well, we ended up with 101000 which, praise the Lord, God is good. And we see that uh, God has answered our prayers about that. But why give? It supports our local church. But number two, not only that, it shows that God is first place in our life and not money. It is so easy to say uh, that God is first, but yet really money has its major priority in life. That it's so much easier to say, well, well, I, 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 God is first. Oh, yeah? You give. Oh, <laughs> that's so hard. Well, we serve God not mammon or, or that of, of money itself. But really, what should help us be motivated in order to give, it is this idea that it produces a reward to our account. I don't understand how this is, because all of, it, all of us are in Christ. It's because of His righteousness and His good works and His doings that we're going to heaven. But when we go to heaven, we're going to get rewarded. I have no idea how that actually works out. I have no idea. It's probably more of we're going to give the reward back to God and giving the glory back to him. But I really don't know. So notice with me what it says in verse number one, the last part of the verse. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Notice at the end of verse number two. Uh, Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse number four, the last part. And thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. So the fact of the matter is that we could give in such a way that we won't get any reward here on earth. But yet there is another way about us giving, and God will actually reward us openly in heaven. So the question that comes to mind is, well, how then do we give with the right motive? Glad you asked. It's right here in the text. Notice with me what, how not to give. Okay, verse number one and verse number two. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Notice with me verse number two. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men so what they do these rich people they say you know they actually <laughs> there are cases where they did have some sort of fanfare for them that da, 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 and everybody's like oh what's going on well he's gonna he's gonna give his his alms here you go yep i'm so great yep i'm so wonderful here you go oh yep here you go yep and it's nothing to him because he's rich but oh yeah how good how good I am. In fact, in the uh, rabbinical teaching, it's very interesting, they basically equated if you give to the poor, if you give alms to the poor, you will have eternal life. Really, it's not by works of righteousness that we do. Okay, okay, well, that, if that's the case, boy, you can, you can pay your way into heaven, can't you? It's like, okay, yeah, here you go, here you go, here you go. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, no problem. I can live my own life. I'm good to go for heaven. Well, no, <laughs> that's not how it goes. So it's there that they are seen of men. They want the glory for themselves. And Jesus says, therefore, ye have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. And then on the last part of verse number two, they 
have their reward. It's interesting. Anytime that we have a motive that we want our, the glory to be for us, reward that we could have got is gone. Like, think about this with me. If you think that you are going to be there and you want people to notice you and, okay, he's reading his Bible, oh, he must be a really, really good person. If you want just the glory for yourself, not for a conversation to witness to them as part of being a Christian, we ought to have the right motive when we're doing the things that we ought to do. And so notice with me how we should do this. How should we give? Verse number three. But when thou doest alms, when you give to the church or give to the poor, let not thy right left hand know what is thy what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Okay, so uh, this does not show that your hands have a mind of their own. Now, okay, so the left hand, not, not knowing what the right hand is doing, is like, oh, hi, how are you doing? Yeah, wh- I don't know what you're doing, so you're over here. No, what that means is, well, it's going to be so secret that not even your hands can tell how much it you gave. You want to give it in such a secretive way that God, that nobody is going to give them the glory, saying, oh, you're such a wonderful person. Oh, you should have the pat on your back. Oh, you, how wonderful you are. No, it's God's good. And so we try to do our best to say, I don't want anybody to know. I don't want anybody to know how much I give. Now, it's important that we do give, but yet I, I know there's cer- certain people in our church that, that they give and they give cash, saying, I don't want anybody to know how much I give. And I know that for a fact because somebody told me. He's like, you might notice that I don't give. I'm like, well, I, I don't really care about that, but okay. And no, no, I, I give cash. Okay, well, praise the Lord. So, but think about it. To give, get the right motives in order to do the things we ought to do, we ought to have the motive of I love God, therefore I want to get in his word. I love God, therefore I'm going to give whatever he wants me to give. I love God, so I'm going to spend some time with him in prayer. I love God, so I'm going to worship him today. I love God. I'm going to church today. I love God. I'm going to be with God's people today. I love God. I love other people. And so that should be their motive behind what we do. And so here, Jesus is just simply saying, you've got to have the right motives behind what you're doing in order for it to count for eternity. So that's the, the message for tonight. And I ask, let's go ahead and ask the Lord's blessing on our time to share prayer requests. Dear Father, we thank you so much for giving us this night. We ask you to bless this time that we have together. Bless the prayer requests that are about to be announced. And Father, we ask you to help us as we turn to you in prayer. We thank you for for each person here. May you bless this time for all of us. I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so prayer request for tonight. So we have Hilda being rescheduled till February for her MRI. So we need to pray for her about that. And Susan for full recovery from that cold that she had.